Hello everyone. I am here today with a new process video. Um, as you can see, if you've been following my previous videos, I'm taking a little detour from what I've been doing lately. I'm taking a break from my New York photos, which are six by eight pocket page layouts. And I am going back to a project I've been working on for a little while. Um, this is a traveler's notebook insert. And I, last summer, let me get to my photos here, um, did kind of a local tourist thing where a friend and I did a history walk and photo walk in downtown St. Paul. And I took tons of photos, of course, so now I have to do something with them. So I did a couple of layouts here quite a while ago, and then I've just sort of let it sit since then. So I want to get back to it a little bit. And as you can see, let me go back here. Um, I put a number one here. These are cork numbers they are from studio calico because i want to number each stop so i'm moving on to stop number two today which is this lovely church called church of the assumption uh, very famous in downtown st paul and so i have these two photos that go with that and so i'm going to work on a layout for those i think my plan is to do whoops one photo on each page so it'll actually be a two page layout here but that's really as far as I've gotten. So I've got the two photos. I've got these. So I can use my number two for that second stop. That's it. So I need to really dig into my stash, find some background papers, and figure out what kind of design I'm going to do here. When I went into my stash, I found this paper. This, I believe is part of a Gossamer Blue Traveler's Notebook kit that I had. I subscribed to them for a couple of months before they decided to close their business. And their stuff usually is one-sided, whereas like Kelly Perky's kits are two-sided. So I'm pretty sure this is from Gossamer Blue. And they always made their insert papers about four and a half by eight and a half, which is a little too big for this. This is a standard size, so four by eight really works well in there. So I did cut off in half an inch both directions here. So I have these little strips left over. Since this photo already has red in it, I think I'm gonna take this and maybe just put it flush to the top or maybe overlap it a little bit or something just to bring in a little bit of that red, but not a lot because his shirt, this was our tour guide, um, his shirt is quite red as it is and I don't wanna overdo it. So I think that's what I'm gonna do there. Now, that leaves me with this whole piece for the other side in here. Now, I think that if you just look quickly at this, that's too much. That's too much red when there's no other red in this picture. All you're getting is what's over here. So I'm going to use it, but not all of it. So I'm not sure what that means if I'm going to cut it on a diagonal or tear it or what. Not sure yet. So I'm gonna start with the left side because that's easier because I know that I can you know, start with this and at least that'll get me going and then I'll figure out my number placement and I'll go from there. I did adhere the red piece here, but when I was going through my stash, I found this paper. Let's see if we can get up close. You can see there is a little bit of a pattern in it there. It's mostly just kind of a tan color and I think that'll work because I've got this tan in the brick here this is more of a cream color, but there is a tan door that you can see a little bit there. And then I have these, which are, you know, that brown cork color. So I think that'll work. And then when I move over to the right side, I think it's close enough that it'll enhance the color of this building as well. So I think what I'm going to do is I don't want these stacked like that. That's too symmetrical. So I think I'm going to tear the end of this and do it just kind of maybe a quarter of the way to a half of the way over. And as a side note, I chose to put this photo on the bottom half because if you look at this page, I did my writing here. Now, if you've never worked in a traveler's notebook insert before, um, it's kind of a good thing to keep in mind that a lot of the pages are quite thin. And on this particular type of paper, 
um, it's a little bit sturdier than regular copy paper, but not by much. And so sometimes you can see a little bit of the writing show through. So I kind of took care of that by just disguising it and putting the photo over it. I'll probably do my journaling up here, which will be fine because this portion is already covered. You might see a little bit show through here, but it won't be much, if anything. So I think that's a good way to kind of tweak your design to ensure that you've got a nice look on both sides of the page. I did decide to just tear this. Um, I like to do that sometimes if I don't want too much of an even edge. Everything tends to look too linear. So I, I like to do this technique. So I did that. And now I'm just going to put some adhesive on there. And I'm going to adhere it on this side. Not quite flush to the top, but almost. because it helps offset this red so they're not totally even and there's a little overlap you know but it's not totally even and then it gives me more space down here too to play with perhaps more journaling or put some embellishments there I don't know I haven't decided but it gives me a nice base to work with where I could keep this totally up here I could overlap I have options there so I'm going to think about where I want to place this and then I'll be back I decided to place the photo with quite a bit of red still showing here. I didn't want these to be directly across from each other, but a little, you know, diagonal overlap kind of is okay, I think. And then it leaves me enough room down here. Now, as I was looking back at this layout, I've really liked how this overlapped just a tiny bit on the photo. So I think I'm going to kind of make that a thing in this Traveler's Notebook insert, that I will do that with every photo if possible. So I'm gonna put the two down at the bottom on this one, I think, so that leaves me up here. I can stamp, I can find some phrases or something, so I won't leave that totally blank. I'll do something with it, but I think I want that two down at the bottom. I had here the cork number two. Let's do a close up there. I had a little problem with it. When I took it off the backing sheet, it tore at the bottom. So there's just a slight tear there. Hopefully nobody will really notice it but me uh, once this is done. But um, if you have these letters just be or numbers, just be really, really careful when you take them off the sheet because um, they are quite thin and they may rip. So be careful. Uh, the next thing is I took another little piece of the same paper, ripped it again, and I think I'm going to place it up here along the edge and probably stamp something on it. For now, I don't know what that's going to be, but I'm gonna hang on to this and I'm going to look for some labels and phrase stickers maybe that I could put under here that kind of go with the local tourist or travel theme. Uh, so we'll see what I come up with in just a minute. I pulled these out of my stash. These are stickers that are from Pretty Little Studio. Uh, whoops, this way, there you go. Pretty little studio on the go. Um, and I like this one that says local favorites. However, I think I'm gonna cut off the S so it just says favorite because that is one of the most popular churches in downtown St. Paul and it's definitely local for us. Uh, so I think I'm gonna use that. And I already adhered this. So I think I'm gonna put it right above it so that there's some separation between this blue and the blue that will be up there just to give this a little more definition and fun and sparkle, I have pulled out just a clear little rhinestone. I have a glue dot on the back of there and I'm just going to put it right up here. There we go. So it draws attention to it. And then I'm still trying to figure out what I might stamp here. I'm on the lookout for that. And if I do it here, I'll probably do something over here as well. Um, or maybe I'll go for the visual triangle here, here, something down here. I don't know. I have to see what I have in my stamps. I know I have some things that are themed kind of like around town or local tourists or things like that. So I will go through that and, you know, see what I can come up with to finish this off. I decided to use my stamp that says Go See Do on this side and I wanted it to overlap on this brown. As you can see, it did not come out perfectly. It kind of caught this edge here and makes it look a little bit more separated than I would like, but not enough for me to cover it up. I'm gonna leave it. So if that happens to you, try to make the best of it, just make it work. 
you know, perfection is boring. I often say that, so I don't mind that it's a little off there. I think it gives it a little character, so I'm going to keep it. I also decided to stamp in pictures right here under it, so it reads as local favorite in pictures. I thought that was kind of clever and worked. Um, this is from a stamp set by Citrus Twist. There's the in pictures there. And then there are all these other stamps with it. And I'm not sure if you can just go to their website and still buy this. Uh, I got it as part of a kit, but go out and take a look if you like it. To finish out this page, I decided that I did want the visual triangle. However, I couldn't really find a phrase that I liked there. So I decided to just do these little arrows because then it points up right at the door of the church. It brings your eye around so that you're looking at that. And so I thought that was, you know, a pretty appropriate way to, to make all these elements work. Um, that particular stamp is also from a set from Citrus Twist, different set. Uh, so again, if you like it, go on out to their website and see if you can find it. As for the layout, I think it's done. I tend to do most of my journaling off camera, so I'll figure out what I want to say up there. But I think for the most part, this one is complete. I like the mix of color. I like the stamping. And I do like that I've continued on with the overlapping number that indicates the spot on the tour. So I hope you enjoyed watching me put this together and that you'll come back for the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone.